but using the gospel that we read a little while ago, but it is another gospel lesson for this Holy Trinity Sunday. And it's from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of John, reading verses 12 through 15. I have yet many things to say to you, but you shall not hear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare you to you these things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I said, he will take what is mine and declare it unto you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As we sang the opening hymn this morning, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, it is, I believe, one of the hymns that will never be deleted from our hymnal. Because I believe that many of us were raised and reared on singing this hymn, and we might say that we cut our religious eye teeth on it. We were weaned away from the Sunday school days in our childhood. And we may never forget, and we may continue to sing those gospel hymns that were so easy to learn and to love. They were so simple, so totally oriented to the Bible stories that we learned in Sunday school. But we did always see the connection between the hymn and the stories. Holy, 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 I believe has to be sung, especially on this Sunday. And I know of some congregations, and two of them in particular, my home congregation as I was growing up, and another congregation that I had served that used to sing this hymn every Sunday during the Trinity season as their opening hymn. Because it said so much and does it so well. It was Reginald Heber who composed this hymn early in the 19th century. And I am convinced that the statement about holy, holy, holy reveals to us the truth about God. And at the same time, it's something of a prayer for us and for our world as we attempt to celebrate the festival of the Holy Trinity. The truth that uh, we know about God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, comes to us by divine revelation in the world, in the Word, and through the work of the Holy Spirit. We do not arrive at the truth of God by philosophical systems or by mystical experiences, though both of those might be a very good help in our understanding and growing in our faith. God shows us what he knows is necessary for our living the faith by revealing himself in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as one God. And how easy it is, I believe, to rattle off the opening of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God the Father. And then we go on from there and say in each of the three paragraphs or the three persons that are represented there, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But how 
difficult is it for us to comprehend the mystery of the three persons? When we talk about it, it sounds a bit like religious double talk. We do know God through his work of creation. The universe, the earth, the solar system, all of the vast mystery of outer space. A man centuries before the birth of Christ looked up into the sky and marveled at the way that God revealed himself to his creatures. And these are his words. And we just read it a few minutes ago when we joined in the Psalm 8. O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set the glory above the heavens. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have made, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visited him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, you have crowned him with glory and honor. Thou made him to have dominion over the works of their hands. You have put all things under his feet. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. My friends, if it were only so, if all we had to do was to look up at the sky and the stars and the planet or look at the beauty of the earth, what we would see. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Realizing only that God can give an answer to that and the related questions that may follow. The story of God's relationship with his people, Israel, is revealed how often and how desperately God had attempted to convey the truth about his relationship with his creatures. For when the world was young and the people were disobedient and wicked, God resorted first of all to a terrible flood to cleanse the earth and correct the ways of the people that were living upon it. But to many of us, as we live through these human things, we do not consider sin or our personal sacrifices that we have to make for these things that we do on our own. But the flood of that time was the best partial solution to the people then. A temporary change in the climate of human and divine relationships upon the earth. Something more had to be done. And so the Gospel writer John tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son as God's final act to put things right in the world. Those who have seen Christ have seen the love of the Father offered to the world in a tremendous personal sacrifice and cost. Christ is God's free and gracious gift to all people so that as his children, life might become all that is possibly good for them. The gift, Jesus Christ, releases us from sin and the power of death into the possibility of a new life in Jesus Christ, here and now, and in the life that is to come. I am reminded of a picture I saw in a newspaper many, many years ago. 
right in the middle of that photograph picture stood a very portly man who was either balding or had a crew cut, I don't know which. He wore no shirt. His arms were folded across his chest. His stomach hung down over the top of his pants, and I would say that he had done that disease. And to his left stood the edge, a whole shack, and on the porch of the shack was a woman slumped in sleep in her rocking chair. And in the background, you could see a large satellite antenna. And the caption under the picture read, they're tuned in to the world. They lived in the mountains of West Virginia, apparently isolated from the rest of the world. But this satellite enabled them that they could get nearly 60 channels, including four movie channels, several Christian networks, and most big city TV stations across the country. The man's brother stood beside him, and above him was a caption, you can't beat the best reception. And when he was accused of using welfare funds to purchase this antenna, the answer was, we paid for it. We bought this antenna, antenna mostly for mom. She's old and she can't get around and go anywhere. She watches TV a lot, but there she was, when the picture was taken, sound asleep in her rocking chair. It brings back some things that I can picture at our house, in our TV room, from time to time. And don't say anything like that. <laughs> One thing that we know for certain about people living in the world today is that we are tuned in to the world while we are so much not tuned in to God. The work of the Holy Spirit is to change all of that. He comes to us in the world to tune us into the truth about God, the Father and the Son. He convinces us that God is love and that we can rely on what he has done for us in the precious gift that he gave to us in his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit assures us that God has conquered sin, death, and the devil and that the truth through Christ and the Spirit, we can live a life to its fullest in Christian love and hope right now. And the Holy Spirit enables us to face the certainties of life in a world that seems to be destroying itself one way or another today. And so, on this Trinity Sunday, we see God, one God in three persons, empowering us to sing with faith and feeling, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the singing of the hymn.